Welcome back to the shooting channel. And today we're gonna to go through five ways to reduce recoil when you're out shooting. When you're cloak mounting that gun, you wait and your weight is on the front foot. So your chin is over the ball of that foot. Most people, the weight comes on the back. So when your weight forward and the gun goes off, the recoil just rocks you back. When you're stood flat footed, the recoil goes bang. So that is the biggest thing you need to be thinking about is your weight is forward there when you when you shoot that gun and this is why on the channel i say to you about when you're looking for that first gun go to find your local shooting school don't necessarily go to a gun shop your local gun shop find your local shooting school and the experts at that shooting school will help you and it doesn't matter you can buy any gun you want there is certain guns that you can get that will reduce that recoil so that's really the stance the next thing is going to be the skeet vest. Again, there's lots of different skeet vests out on the market and you need to find something that's wide here and comes down all the way from the cartridge pocket up to the shoulder. And then you can get yourself browning, I believe do the best one, must also do one, but the browning ones are very squidgy and they will fit into the pocket of the skeet vest there. So it makes it a lot more softer. But I would recommend try and find one. There is three or four different companies out there. I think Musto and I think the browning one are probably the best two for recall. And again, we recommend the Sealand skeet vest, one of the best on the market for reducing the recall. And they are sensible money. They start at 35 pounds and go to 70 pounds. You've also got a shoulder pouch, which personally myself, I don't particularly like these because they move on the shoulder. And the whole idea when you're putting that gun into your shoulder is you want it there. You don't want it here. You don't want it here. So you move it there. So I believe in these a lot more than I do the actual pads that go across the shoulder because they move and they're uncomfortable across here. But that is an option if you want a different option. Recoil pads on guns. So a lot of the older guns, so I've got an old Browning 325, they come with a hard buck plate like this. They come with a very, very hard butt plate. And again, years ago, they didn't really worry about recoil. But gun's absolutely perfect, but you can always put one of the new recoil systems on it. And the new Browning recoil system is like that. So if you look at that compared to the old one, it's a lot softer and they do do three different types. You can put the new ones onto the old Brownings as well. I'm gonna be honest, don't do it yourself. Find you a decent gunsmith and do it because if you the problem is if you do it yourself and you cut this toe off makes the gun shoot completely the wrong place so you've got to have these two points are the most important thing that you can have for making that gun shoot where you're looking so if you do look at that you can buy one of these from your local shop or shooting school but if you do look at this please 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 ask a gunsmith to put to to change it and he will change it correctly. The lighter the gun, the more recoil. And there's certain guns out there, manufacturers make lightweight guns. There's certain guns out there which really, really kick like more than anything else. So this is an ordinary Browning game gun. It's not a lightweight game gun. So it's still got a little bit of weight in it to absorb that recoil. This is a Breta Ultralight. They never quite took off. They're really light. You put a little bit of a more of a thumpier game cartridges through them and they will kick you. I know they've got the recoil pad on them, but they really, really didn't particularly work that well. The Browning Liberty Light 
is actually a little bit heavier. It's still a lightweight, but it's actually a little bit heavier than this one. So I have to say, I think Browning have got their lightweight guns slightly better than any other manufacturer. The other one that does do a reasonably good lightweight gun is the Blazer, the new Blazer Lady Gun. Um, again, it's lightweight, but it's not as light as this. So you've got that, that lightweight gun has got to be right. The MK38, it's a heavy, it's, made, it's designed from a trap gun. Again, if you want a decent gun with a bit of weight, try a trap gun. Again, they've got a recoil pad on already. They're heavy, they do absorb the recoil. And then lots of manufacturers do them. This is the Browning XS Pro. They've got the stock weight, the barrel weight. You can actually measure it up so you can have more weight here and that actually helps reduce the recoil as well. Again, Bretta do one of these, Blaza do one of these, Yield it to do one of these. There's a lot of manufacturers that do the actual barrel weights in the stock and the barrels. Again, if you're looking at a side-by-side, side-by-sides generally will kick more. But if you look at something like an AYA, again, it's got that little bit more weight than a normal English side-by-side -side to, to try and balance up that they're not like a proper clay gun, so they will kick more than a series clay gun, but they're not like a really lightweight side by side. So again, an AYA is a good one to look at if you're looking for a side by side, but you don't particularly want a massive recoil. And that is really the difference between the guns. The last thing is gonna be the cartridges. If you want to get a, a soft cartridge, the first thing you need to look at for is a plastic wad cartridges. Plastic wad cartridges do recoil a lot less than a fibre wad. So again, I know a lot of people want to go away from plastic and go into fibre, but the bigger shooting schools, and if it's a CPSA shooting school, they cannot tell you, to sh as long as you're shooting clay cartridges, you can choose whether you shoot plastic or fibre. And if you're looking to start somebody off, always start them on a nice 24 gram plastic in 20 ball or 12 ball, it's a lot softer. There are some manufacturers, whole do one, the whole compacts, that are fiber, but they're also subsonic. So you don't want to go for a subsonic cartridge. So there's some grounds out there that have to shoot subsonic cartridges. Try and avoid those grounds. Try and go to the big shooting schools when you're starting off. So you can use a sensible fast cartridge, but a soft cartridge. So plastic wood is the first thing. And the other thing, the more expensive cartridges tend to have a recoil system in them. Don't go for the fastest cartridge on the market. Black Gold is one of the fastest cartridges on the market, but the faster the cartridge, the more recoil there is. And these are probably the most thumpiest cartridge you will get on the market. I would say try and look for a speed of between 1400 and 1500 foot per second. Anything faster than that, you don't need it for sporting clays. Black gold are a lot faster than that. They don't need it. They just want to be the big I am. You don't need to have that. I would say if you're looking at a top of the range cartridge, the Rossons are about the best you can get. The fastest cartridge you can get with the less recoil. And then you've got Ely Olympic Blues, a nice little cartridge, been around for a long time. The plastic ones are soft and the fiber ones. Good little cartridge for a soft, um, a shell. And then the 5 Award 24 grams, a nice little soft cartridge, really great for teaching. We use, or the Oxy Gun Company uses a lot of the plastic TT ones. They're probably in, the most inexpensive cartridge for teaching and for learning to shoot and in a plastic wad. So that is pretty much, If I would love to hear if you have got a problem with recall, if a gun has punched you, please comment below and we'll do our utmost to, to answer your questions. And please let us know, this is my opinion on how to reduce the recall. And please let us know on how you think and how you feel we could better this or move on. Or if there's a way that you found um, that you can reduce the recall. There is one other thing that you can do, porting barrels. So porting barrels means drilling holes in the barrels here which reduces muzzle flip and recoil. 
Again, it's something that trap shooters and skeet shooters will look at. Sporting and game shooters don't really look at. But that's something which is a sixth one that you can put in if you're looking at this and a very top end shooter is porting bows. I hope you've enjoyed this program. Please, please, please like and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram. Like, like us on Facebook and please, please, please support the channel and join the membership for as little as $2.99 a month. I've cut into this film to bring to you the giveaway we did at the game fair for the AYA number two. But the first thing, before I pick the winner or the winner gets picked, I'd like to thank everyone for visiting us on our stand at the game fair and for entering the competition for winning the AYA number two. This is our biggest giveaway we've done so far of an, a value of a, of a gun worth about £2,000. We are going to introduce two of our youngest viewers that is going to press the button to see who wins the gun. Welcome to Henry and to Holly, two of our youngest viewers and they are going to press the button to see who wins the AYA. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And the number is... Forty-six. If you bought white 46, you are the proud owner of the AYA number two. So please email us at contact us at the shooting channel.co.uk to claim your gun and to pick it up from the Oxford Gun Company. Yeah.